I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a quick explainer video about the timing of judicial review. This is a chapter or a subsection of a chapter in almost every administrative law casebook. And we're talking about judicial review of agency actions, final agency action, ripeness, and exhaustion of remedies. I have other videos that are about the cases relating to each of these concepts, but it's easy to have them start to blur together in your mind um, as you work through the cases. And so instead of making an, yet another video about a case, I wanted to make one that kind of either you could use as a chapter introduction or a chapter recap to make sure you have these the concepts um, straight in your mind. And if you are a little confused, keep in mind that lawyers and even courts get, confu get confused and conflate these. So um, when is judicial review premature? That's really what we're talking about with all of these things. The Administrative Procedure Act provides for judicial review of adverse actions or decisions by agencies in some situations. But sometimes the matter is not at a proper stage or legal posture yet to go into court or to seek judicial intervention or review. So let's talk about final agency action first. And this can be confusing because it could, as you know from some of the cases you may have read, this could be sort of a preliminary determination, but even that determination might be final. So the Supreme Court in 2016 um, kind of broke this down into a two-part test. The action has to mark the consummation of an agency decision-making process, and it has to be one by which rights or obligations have been determined or from which legal consequences will flow. And so if the agency, for example, is announcing something and it doesn't really affect anything yet, um, doesn't affect your property values or your rights or um, your eligibility for a certain government benefit or something like that, then it's not a final agency action. So for example, um, allowing you to um, apply to something is not a final agency action or sending you an acknowledgement that they received your application is not a final agency action. Okay, ripeness. Let's talk about ripeness for a moment. This normally comes up when a regulated party challenges a new regulation or rule before the agency is actually bringing an enforcement action against that party. So you can challenge the legitimacy or legality of a rule once you're the target of an enforcement action and say, by the way, they can't enforce this against me because the rule is invalid. But sometimes regulated parties uh, don't want to wait. They kind of want to do a preemptive strike as soon as the rule is promulgated instead of waiting around for a possible enforcement action to come someday. And there's a few reasons why they might want to do this. Either they just want to clear this uh, cl looming liability away, or it could be that if they wait until the enforcement action comes, they might have actually missed a deadline for challenging the validity of the rule under some statute. So here's our what the Supreme Court has set forth as the two-prong test for whether a matter is ripe for judicial review. The mass matter has to be fit for review, which usually means that there's only a purely legal question, like is the agency allowed to do this under their enabling statute? In other words, we don't really need more factual development in the case. Um, and then the second factor is that it would there would be genuine hardship on the parties if they wait until an enforcement action to challenge the rule. And if you want a great example of that, you should read the Abbott Laboratories v. Gardner case from the late 1960s. Okay, let's talk just about exhaustion of remedies for a moment. Um, claimants have to exhaust their administrative remedies such as interagency appeals or requests for reconsideration before seeking judicial review. So sometimes someone receives an adverse decision, a denial from an agency or a revocation of their license or permit, and they talk to a lawyer and the lawyer goes running into court with that. Wait, wait, don't do that. Um, if the agency allows you to uh, file an appeal with an internal appeal in the agency, you have to do that first. You have to exhaust that remedy. By the way, as an aside, if you are researching this area, please be aware that we have exhaustion of 
um, court remedies in another area of law, which is habeas corpus law for um, criminal defendants. And so most of the cases that will come up when you do a Westlaw search will be about exhausting your state law remedies before you, which basically means appealing your conviction before you can file a habeas claim in federal court. Don't get that confused with exhausting your administrative remedies, even though it's a very similar or analogous concept. Now, missing um, deadlines and forfeiting administrative remedies also means the party failed to exhaust their administrative remedies. So let's say you're in practice someday, I'm gonna go off my slide for a second, and a prospective client comes into your office and says, um, so I got this denial or rejection or revocation letter from this agency and I'm mad about it, I wanna sue, I wanna challenge it in court. And you read the letter and it says you have 60 days to file an appeal, um, an internal appeal with the agency or to ask for reconsideration or something like that. And they waited six months before they came and talked, did a consultation with a lawyer. Well, that person didn't exhaust their administrative remedies, even though those remedies are no longer available. They forfeited them um, by missing their deadline. So if you do go into court, the court is going to say your client didn't exhaust his administrative remedies, and now you are out of luck. Okay, so again, just to, I made a little diagram for you. Um, some students find these helpful. We have final agency action, we have ripeness, and we have exhaustion of remedies. All of these overlap in that they're all about timing and bringing a claim prematurely into court um, before, well, the before the agency is really done or before a court should be um, intervening. Now. Judicial review of an agency action is going to be premature if any of the, and unless uh, um, uh, we have all each of these in place. So if you don't have a final agency action, you don't get to go into court yet. If it's not ripe for review, you don't get to go to court yet. And if you haven't exhausted your administrative remedies, you don't get to go to court yet. Um, and remember, the what's going to happen is the court is going to dismiss the case. And you better believe that the agency is going to ask them to do that, right? So the agencies deal with this all the time. The lawyers for the agency know to watch for this and they will check the, the, a filing um, and see, did this party actually have a final agency action or was the claim ripe or did they exhaust their administrative remedies? And if not, they are gonna file a motion to dismiss um, in a lot of cases. So just to explain these a little bit, I already have, but I'm now I want to do it on a diagram so you can visualize them all together. For a final agency action, for that question we ask, has the agency rendered a final decision on your matter? Or if you're challenging a rule, have they actually published the final rule? So for example, if you're up, so you want to challenge a rule and it's still a proposed rule during the notice and comment period, um, then that's gonna be premature. We don't even have a final agency action. For ripeness, we ask two questions. Is the matter fit for review in that it's really just a legal question that the court could easily answer at this stage with there's no more factual or legal issues that need to develop. And then the second prong though is, will there be hardship on the, the party if they actually have to wait until they're the target of an enforcement action to challenge the validity of the rule? And then for exhaustion of remedies, we're gonna ask, does the claimant still have some alternate route? Do they have administrative remedies like an agency hearing that haven't been used or exhausted? Um, now, there's an exception to the exhaustion, which is futility and harm, right? So um, you could have someone who might say something like, if I wait and go through the administrative process because of their backlog, I will be bankrupt by that, like I'll be out of business. So losing my license or my practice, my permit doesn't even, won't even matter. So if pursuing the, there sometimes courts, not always, you can't count on this, do have sort of an exhaust, uh, an, I'm sorry, an exception for the exhaustion of remedies requirement where it would be, there's sort of a futility involved. Like if they make you do that, then your case will be moot. 
Um, or if the agency has basically said, by the way, you can appeal it, but we're not changing our minds no matter what. So if they have somehow indicated that you're wasting your time um, with pursuing your administrative remedies, you can try telling that to the court and seeing if they decide that exhaustion shouldn't apply in your case. So in other words, for each of these requirements, they apply almost all the time, but in rare cases, courts have made exceptions to each one of them. Okay, watch out. If you file in court before you have a final agency action or before the matter is ripe or before exhausting your administrative remedies, courts will usually dismiss the claim. And in the meantime, you may have missed a deadline to file an administrative appeal or ask for reconsideration. Remember, the court's not going to dismiss your claim the next day. It's going to sit on the docket for a few weeks or however long they have, maybe months. And in the meantime, you've probably missed a deadline for your internal re, um uh, alternatives at the agency, and then you are going to be out of luck. You will have forfeited the potential claim. On the other hand, your client will now have a malpractice claim if this was really your decision. Similarly, a court will dismiss a claim if your client already missed the deadline for filing an administrative appeal or request for reconsideration and thereby forfeited their administrative remedies. In other words, as I said earlier, they didn't exhaust their remedies and then they came and talked to you and they those remedies have now been forfeited well the court is going to say that's not how it works you don't get to just sit around and wait for your administrative remedies to expire and then you get to come into court you're supposed to go through the channels that you had available to you and then you can seek judicial review okay here's a review question to see if you've been paying attention what are the three timing requirements with challenging agency actions that could make judicial review premature and therefore not available? A, final agency action, ripeness, and exhaustion of administrative remedies, or B, injury in fact, causation, and the possibility of judicial redress? Boy, hopefully you know the answer to that. That was supposed to be an easy question. And if you don't, I don't think you were paying attention and you should rewatch this video. That concludes our little lecture um, about the timing of judicial review.